shopping for sneakers when you were a kid. Yeah, all those cool designs and styles, some with superhero graphics or sports team logos. But as engineers, we all had one real question. Which ones were fastest? Some of us, <coughs> me, would do our own field tests, running up and down the store aisle seeing if we could tell the difference. Yeah, these seemed to be pretty fast. Then we grew up and started buying FPGAs. Hey, which one of these is the fastest? We started reading F-Max numbers from data sheets, looking up speed grade options. It was those sneaker days all over again. Know what? It's not the sneakers. And it's not the FPGA either. <laughs> Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. If you want to make your FPGA design go fast, you should probably just forget about the data sheets and focus on the thing that actually does matter. Optimizing your design through synthesis and layout. Yep, all the speed grades in the world won't help you go fast if your design's not optimized. Just like those sneakers. My guest today is Paul Owens from Synopsis, and we're going to talk about improving quality of results, that's Q-O-R in industry speak, in your high-performance FPGA designs. Before we get started, remember to click that link. There you can download a free technical article that further expands on this subject. Hi, Paul. Thanks so much for joining me today. Hi, Amelia. I'm glad to be here. Okay, so with today's more complicated FPGAs, time enclosure is becoming a bigger and bigger problem. What kind of things can I do to address this issue? This is really a big problem in FPGA design. Well, there's a lot of things that designers can do, and we want designers to use a methodological approach to creating constraints for their design. We want the designers to define and verify your design constraints, analyze your synthesis timing results, update your constraints, and then you can integrate your place and route tool with our simplify tool, and then finally correlate your place and route results with our synthesis results. Okay. So it seems like I get stuck in these big iterative synthesis, place and route loops all the time, and it feels like I never can get quite out of them. Give me an overview on how I can bust out of this loop and still get good quality results. Okay, well, we like to think of it as doing better, faster, and sooner. Okay. You want to do better planning for your synthesis designs. Mm -hmm. You want to have better methods for setting up and verifying your constraints. Yeah. For faster, performance, there's coding guidelines to head off problems from the start, and there's also various synthesis options that will improve your synthesis results. And then finally, what we call sooner, and getting sooner design delivery by allowing you to correlate your timing results with your synthesis place and route results. Right. Okay, so Paul, you said the first step was better planning. Um, let's talk about that. Okay. An important thing that designers should realize is when they're running synthesis, if they find a critical path in their synthesis, this will be a critical path in place and route. Oh, sure. So our synthesis tool is timing driven. You want to fix timing problems ahead when you're actually running synthesis. Hmm. So you want to do things like RTL code updates. You want to create attributes and directives for your design. And you want to look at various project options when you're running synthesis. So if your synthesis time takes about X hours, the place and route time can take, for example, 4X hours. You want to try to avoid this constant loop of going between synthesis and place and route by heading off problems during the synthesis portion. Right. Okay, Paul, you said a magic word there. Constraints. One of my biggest challenges is always getting my constraints right to start with. So the important thing about constraints is you want to have the correct timing constraints. Okay. This means you want to identify the clocks in your design. You want to identify and create clock groupings and clock relationships. So you're going to define the various clocks from your design and set them into different asynchronous groups. Okay. You also want to constrain your clocks for the correct frequency. You want to constrain your inputs and outputs. And then also you want to identify and constrain multi-cycle paths and false paths. Okay, so walk me through this constraint process. Okay, so looking at this diagram, for the overall synthesis process, you start out with your RTL code, you have your correct environment set up, and your input is your design constraints. Ah. One of the first things we do is compile the design into a pre-map database. This is where we can analyze your constraints and generate reports, which I'll talk a little bit later. Then we apply the constraints into your design, 
map your design, and then finally generate your output netlist and the forward annotated constraints, which are sent to the place and route tool. So I see that there are design constraints and there's an arrow going in, but how do we create those constraints? Good question. There's actually several methods to create your constraints. Okay. One of them is we have an option in our tool called Fast Synthesis. Oh, If okay. you have a brand new project and you haven't created constraints before, this is a quick and easy way to do that. You can set the Fast Synthesis option. What this does is it doesn't enable all of the various algorithms and enhancements for synthesis. Okay. It actually creates what we call like a quick and dirty synthesis run. All right. But this will pipe clean the flow, showing there's any issues in your design, and also will create an initial report, a timing report, which you can analyze and use that information to base your timing constraints on. Cool, all right. So you said there were several things, so what else you got? Okay, another one is we have a new tool called Create FDC Template. This is a tickle utility, and it's basically very simple. You just specify, you say Create FDC Template, you specify your input delay for your input pins, your output delay, and then the clock period. Okay. What this does, we'll try to analyze your design and create what's called your initial FDC template that will have initial constraints for your designs. It will define your clocks, define the input delays and output delays, and try to create asynchronous clock groupings for your clocks. So is there a way I can add additional, more complicated constraints, you know, multi-cycle paths, I.O. standards? Exactly. If you've created an FTC constraint through this FAST technique, or you can actually use the scope editor. Oh, so okay. The scope editor is a GUI interface to which looks like an Excel spreadsheet. Ah. This allows you to actually select tabs and specify the constraints yourself. Oh, okay. So I know what SDC is, but um, what exactly is this FDC business? FDC stands for FPGA Design Constraints, ah. and these are new set of constraints that supersede SDC. Okay. They look more like design compiler constraints. Ah. So if you're an ASIC designer doing prototyping with an FPGA, these will look very similar to you or very familiar to you. Very cool. Okay. They're tickle-like constraints that what they do is look in your design database for an object and then try to apply a property to the object. Okay. So the syntax looks something like get star, like get cell, get yeah. port, get net. So what this does is it tries to search through your design database, find this object, and apply the constraint to this object. Okay, it sounds like I need to do a bit of homework here. So are there any general guidelines I should follow? That's a good point. There's rules of thumb for setting up your constraints. And the most important thing is defining all your primary clocks and all your input ports or nets connected to input ports. You want to define clocks on black box outputs. Uh -huh. You want to define generated clocks on nets. You don't define gated clocks. You want to provide the correct clock constraints. You don't want to over-constrain your design. Because right. again, their synthesis engine is timing driven. And yeah. so we'll try to accurately model your design. You want to create timing exceptions for things like false paths and multi-cycle paths. And a good technique you can use is actually separate your timing constraints from your design constraints. Oh, for example, okay. if you're using different vendors, mm -hmm. you can keep all your timing constraints, which are vendor independent, in one constraint file. Yeah. Vendor specific constraints in another. Very cool, okay. So how do I know if my constraints are good to go? We actually can generate constraint reports. One is called the syntax constraint checker and the other is like a semantics constraint checker. Okay. The syntax constraint checker verifies the syntax of your constraints themselves. It's almost like a lint. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. And the semantics constraint checker, the full constraint checker, actually takes your constraints, tries to find the object in the design database, and report back if there's any issues. Ah, okay. So what does this report look like? Well, if you have a clock, for example, foo that you've defined. I always have a clock foo in my design. It's a good practice. <laughs> but if the clock doesn't exist in your design, then the syntax constraint check won't find it. But the semantic check will search through the design database to see if it actually can find this clock uh -huh. and apply a constraint. All right. What happens next? Well, after we apply the constraints and run synthesis, then we create the forward annotated constraints, which we send to the place and route tool. For example, for Xilinx, it's an XDC format, and for Altero, it's a VQM format. Okay. Important thing here, too, is after we've generated the XDC or the VQM constraints, you also want to look at that because we'll also report in these constraint files if there are any issues in trying to actually convert the constraints. Oh, okay, okay. So um, I'm in deep here a little bit, Paul. Uh 
how do I keep all this information straight? A good thing is to make sure you have a SolveNet account. Okay. And you want to go to SolveNet to find all sorts of articles on using the Simplify tool. Great. For example, if you use the pull down menu, we have a demos and examples pop up. And right away, it shows in things like recent application notes that will take you right to a repository of all sorts of application notes on timing and constraints. Very cool. Okay, I see now we've moved into the faster design performance section. <laughs> so one of the things for your design is you want to follow correct coding guidelines for right. things like finite state machines, block RAMs, etc. And on SolveNet, there's a lot of articles and in our documentation on actually writing correct code for finite state machines and for inferring block RAMs. Very cool. Okay. Can you give me an example of one of these tricks? Well, one of the things that's helpful is actually we have integrated with our tool something called Syncore. Syncore allows you to specify and target a particular technology and specify your RAM. You can specify address width, etc., and if it's byte enabled. This will actually generate the RTL code that you can infer into your design as well as create a test bench. Excellent. So, Paul, I don't have to hand code RAMs? Not at all. Excellent. Similar to this, if you're also using DSP functions or math functions, we've integrated the Symphony Model Compiler. So this works similar to the Syncore, and that allows you to create DSP functions such as FFTs, floating point, RS encoders and decoders, etc. This is technology independent, allows you to try various what-if scenarios to generate the code, along with test benches for these various math functions. Cool, okay. So, all my constraints are good, I followed these best practices, and now I'm ready to go. But what is the tool going to do to actually make my design go faster? Well, the tool is timing driven. So the synthesis engine, based on the timing information and some of the location constraints you give in your constraint file, we will use that information to actually synthesize the design. Ah. There's various implementation options that you can enable and disable, which will help improve synthesis. Okay. So going down the list, we have things like resource sharing. Mm -hmm. You want to disable sequential optimizations. You want to enable things like enhanced optimizations. We have a new feature called advanced synthesis that I'll talk to you about. And we can do things like retiming and pipelining, which allows sharing registers across the design. Yeah. And also I mentioned fast synthesis. In this case, you want to disable that because you want to be sure you enable all the options for synthesis. Right, that makes sense. So what is this advanced synthesis? What exactly is that? So this is a new feature for Simplify Premier 2014-03. This allows you to synthesize with additional placement-aware optimizations. With your pin location set in your constraint file, it uses this information to create better timing models for synthesis. Ah, okay. So, I've synthesized. Um, what do I do next? Okay, first thing you want to look at is your timing report. You want to look at your final log file, and you want to click on the section on the timing report and look at the performance summary. Okay. It'll list things like the clocks, the worst slack in the design, and in this case, you can analyze this and define if there's any clocks that have not been constrained. Okay, so say I'm happy with my timing report and I want to run place and route. What then? When you can run place and route, you can actually integrate your place and route results with Simplify and then use our tool to timing analysis tool to correlate your place and route results with your synthesis timing results. Ah, okay, okay. You can select your place and route timing. You can select various paths and correlate them between your synthesis results and your place and route results. For any timing path that does correlate correctly, it'll show a green check mark. Okay. For paths that don't correlate, it'll show a red X. Oh. And what you can do is hover over that and it'll pull up a pop-up that gives some information about why the path may not have correlated. Cool, okay. There's a lot of good information in the reference manual that walks you through how to analyze your timing report and the whole timing report view. Okay, so sometimes I get to this point and I have a timing violation because it's actually supposed to be a multi-cycle path right? What you could do is, here's an example. Let's say you do show a Slack violation. You can actually select that particular path. You can click on the button that says shows the schematic view. This will actually show, in this particular example, schematic view from the launch and capture flop. Neat, okay. And you can also create a timing report for this. With this particular information, you can pull up your scope editor and drag and drop the registers into this and actually create the constraints there. Hey, okay. We've integrated the place and route function, the timing report, the RTL view, and the scope editor to allow you to drag and drop and create constraints. All right, Paul, I think I might need a bit of a recap. Can you help me out there? Okay, so basically the keywords are better, faster, and sooner. 
So you want to get better planning, better constraints will get you better results. You want to set up and verify your design constraints. You want to set your constraints up, run the compilation, generate these constraints and look at them. Mm -hmm. Then for faster performance, there are coding guidelines you can follow to get best performance. And also there's tools to help your design, for example, SynCore and Symfony model compiler as well as this new feature, Advanced Synthesis. Mm -hmm. And finally, Sooner Design Delivery. This allows you when you run place and route, you can correlate your timing results for place and route with your synthesis timing results. Right, okay. I think I'm ready to get started. Where would I go for more information? Okay, you want to go to our Synopsys webpage, look under FPGA, Simplify Pro and Premiere. You want to make sure you get a SolveNet account, which allows you access to things like apps notes and other documentation, which will help you with your design. I definitely will. Well, I think that's all I have time for. Thank you so much for joining me, Paul. It was a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you very much, Amelia. Before we go, don't forget to click that link. There you can download a free technical article that further expands on this topic. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton. For more Chalk Talks, check out the EE Journal YouTube channel or the on-demand section of eejournal.com.